Okay, so Ubuntu Mate 22.04 LTS came out recently and I've been using it for over a week on this micro SD card. Uh, but micro SD isn't the best performance on a Pi. So I've written it to an M.2 drive because that's the fastest drive that I've got that works with the Pi 4. You may have seen it pop up with the SD card in my Windows 95 and Windows 98 DOSBox videos. And uh, for file management and uh, just just using as an operating system, very, very logical. Anyway, let's have a closer look. So the first thing you see is the welcome screen and you can choose to turn this off, uh, but it's a very useful introduction into Ubuntu Mate. So we click on introduction and they talk about different interfaces that you've got an option for on this. And I really like that about this operating system and uh, I'll change the theme in a minute. So you can see with features, various different things, built in security, uh, great app stores on this community chat room software is where you download most of your games and apps and you can see we've got different categories so accessories education uh, games if we scroll down through you can click on something with details and you can have a look at it get a screenshot and find out various different information uh, about what you're downloading graphics you can see really nicely presented and obviously we can use this in full screen so we can see it a bit better so very, very straightforward. And if you want to install something, just click on install and it will go ahead and do it. And it will also keep it up to date. But unlike Windows, which is very aggressive with updates and takes ages, uh, this just notifies you that there is an update available and you can install it whenever you're ready. Oh, I've lost the welcome screen. So let's press the Windows key and start typing welcome. And you can see that I can call that straight back up again. So the theme changing is very, very straightforward. So say for instance, we want this one here, yellow, blue, dark. You can see it applies it, adds these little blue accents and looks very nice. Uh, but it's the desktop layout bit that I really like. So if I close this bit down and click on desktop layout, just makes it really simple. It's actually very, very much like Twister OS uh, in that it gives you so many different options. So familiar we were already on. Mutiny is uh, just like Ubuntu. So you can see it's changing. I need to minimize this so you can see it actually change. And all the icons are here. If I press the Windows key, uh, it's now changed in that we can click on any of these categories or we can go at the top and start typing. So if I start typing Raspberry, you can see Imager comes up. Uh, if I start typing Welcome, Welcome comes up. So very, very straightforward, very easy to use. Uh, we also have Redmond, which is the Microsoft theme. So again, if I minimize that, you can see that we've got very, very much like, uh, well, like a Windows 7, I guess, uh, would be its most familiar one, and all these icons down the bottom here. So it moves everything about, but it, it does it in such a way that it all feels really, really well planned and really well designed. Cupertino I really like, which is uh, the Mac OS style one, because you get a nice looking dock with nice big icons on the bottom of the screen. Oh, I've got to click on it again. There you go. Uh, and it's got a nice animation as you scroll above them. You can see the little tiny blue light which shows which apps are open at the time. And we can click on them and minimize them from the dock. Uh, and if we do show more, there are more options on here as well. And I think the one I preferred was Pantheon because if I show you, if I press the Windows key, uh, it takes over the whole screen. And I like it, but uh, if I say start typing settings, uh, we've kind of covered what we're doing and uh, the Pantheon theme, which is this one, has a very similar look and feel uh, to the Mac OS one. But if I press the Windows key, it doesn't take over the whole screen. And I think I prefer that uh, because you've still got the same way you can search for things. But I just find this a little bit less intrusive. Uh, the fact that you've still got things going on on your screen while all of this is there. It's big enough to see, but it's nice that with the Windows key, you can just call it up, start typing and find exactly which app you want to launch. Now just change the desktop background. Uh, so right click, change desktop background. And you can see there's a load of them in here. Uh, let's go with something with a bit more color in it and close that. It just, it just looks really nice and works really well. So all of this up here, so Bluetooth, uh, all the networking, all the notifications, you can see it's got, this is the battery in my mouse keyboard that it detects. Uh, we've got sound options here as well. And these are all really nice and easy to configure. So if we hit output, 
Uh, I've got uh, digital stereo, which is the HDMI, or audio stereo, uh, which is going to come out the 3.5 mil jack, which I use a lot because I do a lot of screen capture, and it means that the audio is only going to come out the speaker. It's not going to go over any of the speech that I'm doing. So let's close that down. If we click on the terminal, I'm not sure if NeoFetch is installed. Yeah, it is. So I'm overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz. I'd forgotten I'd done that. Uh, so if I go into the file system and boot, and I don't, it's not in config.txt on this one, I don't think. It's under firmware and, and config.txt in there. Yeah, so you can see that I've put in over underscore voltage equals 8 and arm frequency equals 2147, but it shows up as 22 in NeoFetch. So let's close that down. Obviously, LibreOffice Writer comes pre-installed. Now, if we go back to the um, software boutique, uh, I used a different method to install the Dolphin emulator, which is a GameCube emulator. So if we go for software on here, software boutique, and we do a search for Dolphin, you can see that nothing comes up. Now we can, uh, where is it, somewhere along here, we can add more software stores. Yeah, here, more software. So we can install the software store, which gives us Flatpak and Snap applications. And also we can install the Synaptic Package Manager. So you can see here, if we click on this and then apply changes, that will add all of that. And you can see we've got a notification, the application is now ready to use. I'll just let it install the other one, Synaptic. Okay, so that's all done. So if I press the Windows key and start typing software, you can see that it now comes up with software. Uh, and also if I type in Synaptic, then the Synaptic Package Manager comes up as well. Um, so the Dolphin emulator, which is under games, I installed with FlatHub. And this is another way you can install this on this operating system and it does seem to have installed yeah and I, I haven't tested it or anything yet but it definitely has installed now if i do a search for it on here uh so well let's do it in other systems so i've already done it in the software boutique but if we launch software and we'll see what that comes up with uh when we type in dolphin now i did try and install the dolphin emulator with uh it was either PyApps or pykiss i actually installed both of them and I've installed this operating system multiple times, not on the SD card, but on an SSD drive. And there was something I was doing. I was installing uh, the GameCube emulator, P PPSSPP, uh, PS2 emulator, and I think Doom. And I did it multiple times. I'd install it and then restart the operating system. It would just start up with a gray screen and I just had to reinstall it. But PyApps and PyKiss aren't designed for other operating systems, although they often work. So often you can install them and you can install apps and use them that you couldn't get in other places. Uh, but the, the ultimate compatibility with Pi Apps and Pi Kiss is Raspberry Pi OS, the official operating system for the Pi. Obviously there's loads of other ways of getting software and, and to be fair, this flat hub has worked with the Dolphin emulator, which I'm really impressed with. Uh, anyway, so let's have a search and let's try Dolphin on this. Okay, so it does come up and it actually shows up as being installed as well. So um, yeah, and if we have a look at it here, it comes up with FlatHub in the top part here. Okay, so the, uh, the way I installed the Dolphin emulator, I may have been able to just do it through this software store as standard, um, but the way I did it uh, was from another video actually by G's Multiverse, and the method shown in that was to just search for something on FlatHub. So go to FlatHub website and open it up. Do a search. Well, let's go for PS2 this time. Uh, you can see PCSX2 comes up, so we'll click on that and hit install. Then what it does is just downloads it. So we can go to show downloads and uh, we can right click on it and show in folder. We can then right click here and open in terminal. If I move this out of the way, because I need to copy just the name of this. So if I do rename and just copy that, and then we can do flatpak install and paste and hit enter. Oh, okay, so that one doesn't work, but the Dolphin emulator did using this exact same method uh, and there may be a reason for that. Maybe there isn't a compatible version. 
but uh, it gives you another option. If you try and install the Dolphin emulator and can't get it to work, use the method I just showed with Terminal, but you may not need it. It may just work with the software store now. So let's have a quick look at YouTube playback in Firefox because that's what comes installed as standard. Let's do a search for Lee PSP Video HDR uh, and try and play it full screen 1080. So no worries with the advert. So whatever it's in at the moment is playing fine. So 1280 by 720 at the moment. So let's go full screen. And we're dropping a few frames. I haven't changed any settings. I haven't put H264 or Fire or anything like that on there. Uh, it looks like it's stabilized. Oh no, it's still, dro oh, it's still dropping frames at 720. I get better performance with Chromium on my KDE Plasma build, but maybe we'll get better performance just installing Chromium in this. But yeah, 720, not so good, even with the overclock, that's a shame. So let's open the emulator, see if that works. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of tweaking, but I did manage to get it working. I needed to enable the Vulkan driver in graphics. Okay, so it's working, uh, it's very slow, and I haven't played around with any of the settings, and uh, so it probably could be made to work. I've got much better videos on GameCube uh, running on the Pi uh, with lacquer, but just impressive that I've got this to work, really. So, so those extra stores are definitely adding more apps and possibilities. Right, let's close that down. And if we go into uh, the files and the folders just to see how all of that works, just really logical, really easy to use. Uh, if I want to connect to my network, uh, it picks it up straight away and I can go straight into my NAS drive and I can have access to all my files. Uh, so yeah, another great operating system. Ubuntu Mate, I would say, would be one of my go-to operating systems, definitely. So great work by everyone involved. Uh, if you want to try out another operating system, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, it works great and uh, you know the software side of it, the customization, really, really nice. So if you want more information on Ubuntu Mate and how to say it correctly, check out Wimpy's World. Uh, he's one of the creators of Ubuntu 2204 and also does loads of the maintenance on the Raspberry Pi 4 version and even has a very long video showing you exactly how he adds things to it and changes things. If you want to learn more about making and maintaining an operating system, definitely check out that channel. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.